Hello, welcome to another Friday tip. Um, this is one that is for four each, okay? This is one of those hidden, um, or kind of, I'll say, lesser known features inside of Copilot Studio that will help you when you're building your custom Copilots. I'm gonna share with you the essentials of what you need to know, um, where you can get additional information, and also give you some interesting ideas on how you might want to use this, okay? So as usual, I'm gonna start with the key things to be aware of. First of all, this is something that you uh, manage inside of the YAML. And I'm gonna go to Copilot Studio in a couple of seconds here and show you exactly how you do that. But the only way you will find this is if you yourself type this kind inside of the YAML of Copilot Studio. Now, this sample happens to be posted um, already, uh, thanks to Daniel, who posted a clear uh, documentation on this, but I wanted to show it to you as well on video. So in this sample, basically what you're doing is you're running a for each, which is kind of like a method of looping through items uh, iterating, sorry, iterating through items in a uh, table. And here we are using a table in Copilot Studio. So in this particular example, we have a standard topic. Its trigger queries are for each loop and for each. So if I type any of those three things, this is what's going to happen. And then I have a message, right? And the message just defines for each. And then it starts out with a variable. And this is because you'll need a variable that has a table, right? A table of items. And if you can see here, this is a list of cities and the table has three columns, the ID, the name of the, the ID of the city, the name of the city and the description of the city. This is truncated on the right. So excuse me for trying to zoom this. I didn't have the rest of these uh, lines spelled out, but they all end in those curly quotes. And those, I'm sorry, not curly quotes, in those um, curly brackets, okay? And basically, this is defining a table. But I will show you, it doesn't have to be defined by you. It could come from a Power Automate flow, or it could come from an HTTP request, or anything that be before the setting of this variable resulted in a table. Then here's the big thing, all right? Uh, this is where I typed, or you will type, kind is for each. This is going to change the UI and actually end up in your canvas adding a for each block, which we're gonna see together. And then the items here are going to be all the cities, that table, and then the value for each as it iterates is the current city. So think of it, the current item as being the current whatever it is. So this could be topic, uh, I don't know, sales, uh, topic current sale, right? So this is the current item in the table. And then it has a message. So basically what's interesting here is in this sample, we are actually sending a single message for each city. So for every city, there will be a message sent that has the current city name. So here's where you drill into the actual columns and the current city description. All right. Again, you can find this all documented at aka.ms slash Copilot Studio for each. And so you can get this information from GitHub. I just wanted to share this with you because I thought this was such an awesome feature that I wanted you to know about in the tips. All right, let's go to Copilot Studio and kind of look at this up close and, and personal. I'm gonna open up my testing Copilot. Now, this is maybe a tip for you, but I keep a Copilot dedicated to my own YAML testing because I collect YAML from all over the place. And since I can import those, you might've seen my video, What the YAML, but I can import those and use them as, you know, templates, so to speak. I actually keep a whole repository of a bunch of YAMLs. So I also have a co-pilot that I use for testing those YAMLs, right? 
So basically all I do is I go to, I create a new topic. In this case, I created a new topic called for each, a blank topic. Then I went straight to open code editor and I pasted exactly what's in that GitHub documentation, Copilot Studio for aka.ms, Copilot Studio for each. And I pasted it exactly as is. And then I close the editor and this is what you get. Notice in this canvas, I now have this for each block, which you didn't have before. And there isn't a way to actually add it using the node um, plus sign. So this is how you get it. And anything you put inside this for each item will iterate through each item. Okay, so going back to the code one more time, I think we talked about it a minute ago, but this one is related to a table of cities that was hand created. And this was just to prevent you from not being able to use this, right? If we gave you some kind of variable that came from our data, you would get error messages and things. So we just created a, a table of cities. And that table of cities was put into a variable and for that, you can use the standard UI to create a variable and just put an array in that variable. And we chose an array, and here you can see the entire array of three columns with an ID, a name, and a description. Then, this is the key right here. These, these four lines right here, and I'll just zoom in really closely. These four lines are the most important things for this for each block. So the kind being for each written just like that, and it has to have a unique identifier. So you want to make sure that there's no duplicate IDs like that. If you copy this, make sure you change the ID, you know, add something or, or replace something. And then it always has an items and a value. The items should point to the table and the value should be the current item. Okay, um, and you can call these things anything you like. So the item is the topic cities from that table in the variable, and the value is the current city. And then send activity, as you have learned from my other X, uh, YAML, uh, YAML videos, send activity is another way of saying message, right? Send a message. And if you, um, if you use send activity, that also has to have a unique ID, right? But that activity or this message is, has two things in it. Topic.CurrentCity.Name. Remember, you're referring back to what's available in the table. And Topic.CurrentCity.Description. Notice that these topics are in curly brackets. So just make sure they're in curly brackets. That makes sure that it's coming from the variable. Now, if you might be wondering, what are these asterisks about? The asterisks are just saying bold. That's all they're saying, okay? So if we save this, and I kind of run this, I'm gonna unzoom myself so I can see stuff, and I'm gonna open up my test panel, and because the trigger phrases have for each in it, I'm just gonna say for each to trigger this. And then, you notice that it does the message that is kind of like an introduction message that we just happen to have added, right? For each lets you loop through the records in a table. But then the table had Paris, Rome, and Madrid, right? So since it had three, I think the actual exa example may have four or more. You can put as many line items as you'd like, but for each line item, you have a separate message because the for each is happening around the message node okay now i just want to show you another way i use this because i was just really impressed at the power that this might have but i said most likely people are not going to want to create their own tables so where else might i get a table from okay so i thought about the tables that you get from HTTP request. And this inclusivity bot, um, basically, um, 
This is one of the templates I will be sharing with you as the second bot. Remember I promised you three? This is the second one, there's three. Uh, the third one is also done. I just have to get them posted on the community. But uh, this one, if I type the word menu, will show up a menu. And that's a custom topic that is based on an adaptive card. Uh, see if I can zoom a little bit here. And you can see it's just a way of helping people. What can I ask this bot? In addition to like saying what you can do, you can also offer a menu. This is an adaptive card. But notice if I click on learn from your peers, and then I say, let's go. Learn from your peers actually is connected to a YouTube uh, playlist. And all the videos from that playlist are being posted here. Um, and so what I did was I made an HTTP request to YouTube, got back the videos from a specific playlist, and then iterated through them using for each. So let's see kind of what the actions were in that. So I actually have the same for each topic that we had tested in YAML here. And these are all playable right here in the adaptive card, by the way. Yes. Wasn't the important part of this video, but I might actually pretty up this card and make it a little bit more friendly. Um, it doesn't matter what the card, what, what, what you decide to do with your cards. In this case, I just used media. Okay, I just used media. All right, so if we look here at the code editor, which is where I started, of course, right? Um, you'll see that I start with an HTTP request. So maybe I did that directly out of the box. Probably I did that right out of the box. So anything that I could just do out of the box, I did. So I did the HTTP request. It's calling to the Google API for, for YouTube, and it's coming back with a response that has a videos record. And I believe we can still see that here. If we go into our variables, and we look for videos videos here is what the api is returning as far as the schema for the videos and what i need in order to display a card that will let them play the video not just link to it is i need the link to the video which is down here on the bottom a bunch of other things but in here, there it is, the video ID. Now, in this case, the way that, that YouTube returns this payload, it gives you the video ID. And in YouTube, the video ID is always followed by the YouTube URL with a query string of watch a V equals, right? And so what comes after the V equals is the video ID. So that's how I kind of build which media I'm going to be using, right? But I'm going to have to pull that out. So I start by parsing that value. And after I parse that value, and basically I paste the schema from the video's record into here when I'm parsing the value so that I can pull out the items property. So you can see here, topic dot parsed videos because and when I parse I end up with a record called parsed videos and that record I need to pull out the table for items and again this is just looking at the schema of what came back from YouTube depending on which API you're calling take a really close look at your schema so basically if I go back uh, to variables here and I look at the uh, videos, video record value. I can copy this and paste it in Visual Studio Code, Studio Code, or I can paste it in uh, a OneNote. Uh, I mean, something that I can look at closely. And you can see, and I will change this to YAML. So easy. You can kind of see what's coming back from YouTube. And it's based on the playlist that I gave them in the, and I'll put a, a, a link down below to the API I'm using. So in case you want to investigate how this API works, 
this is the ID that I need, okay? And it's falling under a section called snippet, but it is also part of items, okay? And so I'm making a table for items, all right? And then I'm gonna call out anything I need in there, okay? So get close to whatever your API is using because you need to study that payload so that you know how to pull out the table that you need. And I ended up setting a variable calling this table the final videos table. And I set that value to the items of that schema. And then I just put a message here. Here are some videos you might like. Now, here, here is the message. And basically with the message, I added media so that I could configure this media. So I'm gonna look at both of these properties here. So here in the properties, for the media, I can get the image URL. It is part of the schema, so you're welcome to use it. It's not required. What is required is the media URL, okay? That's required. And as you can notice, I used a little bit of a formula to concatenate the prefix in YouTube um, and I hope you can see this. And again, it depends on which, which API you're talking to, right? I'm just concatenating the prefix in YouTube with the video ID, right? And now, because I'm in the for each loop, whenever you get inside that loop, you're using your current item reference, right? Cur current video dot snippet dot resource dot video ID. So what you, you know, dot down into is totally up to what you're trying to achieve. But in this case, I needed to get the video ID. So that's what I drilled down into for the media URL. And I also included the image for the thumbnail. You can do a whole lot of other things in there as well. Totally optional. Okay. And then after I did that, right, it displays one for each of the videos. Remember, I'm in a for each item, so it's going to do one for each, okay? And then um, it just, I can end this conversation if I want to. So topic management in current topic, and there we're done. Right. So I wanted to show you this because it's very likely you might use an HTTP request to get to an API, which will get you the table. Um, in this case, a record first that you will convert to a table. And then the other thing that you will need to, to do is or, or might do is maybe you'll use a Power Automate flow that returns a response um, that is in the format of JSON. Uh, a JSON array, you know, so those kind of things feel free to do that. It still helps you use for each and once you have the for each in your in your UI again, the way I got the for each in the UI was I had to go into the YAML. So code editor view and make sure I added in the right place the for each kind. Okay. It's got to have the for each kind and then the items, the value, and then you can put whatever actions you want after that for each kind. Okay. Um, then you will see this in the UI. And now if you want to add other things to happen for each item, right, you can add that within the for each. So I thought this was a great tip. You let me know in the description if you have other ideas for how to use this. Don't forget, you can find it documented at aka.ms slash copilotstudio for each. And I will see you next Friday for another great hidden feature tip. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend.